each heart and life tonight. Amen. 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 Now that song's in my mind. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter one. Let's do a little bit of introduction. Okay, just briefly, and then we'll begin in verse uh, one. Okay, so it's also written by the Apostle Paul. I believe it was written from Macedonia. I've given you some maps. Do you see Macedonia there on the top left, written in red, that area? And you can see different churches in that area. Philippi, Thessalonica. You see Berea. We know we can read about the Bereans who were more noble than, or more honorable than the uh, Thessalonians. Ran Paul off, but the Bereans wanted to study the Word of God. Okay? Go down below that, you see Achaia. And this is the area in Greece, thing, but that's where Corinth is, Athens. And we uh, read about these different churches, and you see, see the rest of them there on your map. In the uh, book of Acts, you can read a lot, a lot about these. Okay, this first and second missionary journey. But it gives you an idea of where they are, okay? They're not uh, uh, too far from each other, Macedonia and Achaia. It's really kind of relative, though. I'm saying not too far, not to us, when we can jump in a car right. and drive somewhere. Airplane. You know, 50 miles, 100 miles, may not seem like that much, a couple hundred miles, like going to Phoenix or something. But it's a long way when you're walking. Yeah. Okay, or, or even on a ship. Okay, they don't travel that fast, especially ships back then. Okay, they were uh, either road or sail. They felt like they had engines in them and, and uh, were motorized. Okay, so it just gives you an idea where these, these places are at. So he, he wrote this as a follow up. To 1 Corinthians, and we believe it was written between 57 and 60 AD, possibly a year or so after he wrote 1 Corinthians. And he wrote to them, we're going to see as we study this, he wrote to them about reconciliation. Okay? Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, there was a man that had committed adultery. Okay? Uh, even even the, to the extent it wasn't even the kind of sin that was mentioned among the Gentiles. He committed adultery with his stepmother. Okay, and so Paul uh, made some very stern correction okay, of the church and what should be done about that. Well, we're going to see that the man repented. Okay, made things right with God. So we're going to see that he tells them to receive the man back, okay, to be to be reconciled, for there to be a reconciliation. But not only in that situation, remember throughout the book, okay, we dealt, 1 Corinthians, we dealt with divisions. Okay, that's what the devil tries to do. He tries to divide, okay, they were saying divide and conquer. House divided, Jesus told us, cannot stand. Okay, that was quoted by Abraham Lincoln during the time of the Civil War in the Gettysburg Address. Okay, he quoted what the Lord said about it. Okay, because the nation was divided at that time. Okay, so he dealt with divisions. But not only were they to be reconciled to that man that had made things right with God, but there should be a reconciliation in the church. He, he showed them how it was wrong for them to say things like, I'm a Paul, or I'm a Paulus, I'm a Cephas, I'm of the Lord. They were all one body. And if there is divisions, we need to put that away and we need to be reconciled. Okay? So he's going to deal with not only the reconciliation of the man, but the reconciliation of the church. And as we go on around chapter 9, he's going to be dealing with giving. Okay? And uh, finally, at the end, okay, he's going to deal with his apostolic authority or the authority that he has in the Lord. Okay? 
Okay, we saw some of this in 1 Corinthians, but once again, he's going to defend his ministry because there were people that were finding fault with him. Okay, so he begins to defend his ministry once again. So I have a simple three-point outline there for you. Okay, so the ministry of reconciliation, chapters 1 through 7. The ministry of giving, giving chapter 8 and 9. Okay, and the ministry of the Apostle Paul, chapters 10 through 13. So let's begin now in chapter 1, okay, and verses 1 and 2. Okay, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Timothy, our brother, and of the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are at Achaia. Okay, so you see that area where Corinth was located is referred to as Achaia. Okay? Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so right off the bat we see a typical salutation from the Apostle Paul. He establishes his apostolic authority. When we say the word apostolic, that's not a denomination. Okay? People have put that in their church name. Okay, whatever. Right? But it's not a denomination. All it means is that Paul was an apostle. Okay? So he establishes his authority as an apostle. And he does this. You go and you read the different epistles and the different letters that he wrote. He does this in all of his epistles, epistles, he establishes his authority in God to say what he's going to say. Okay, he has the authority to do it, to speak as a minister. Okay, the only book that he does not do this okay, in is the book of Hebrews. Okay, he does not name himself as the author of the book of Hebrews, but he is. Okay, and the reason that he doesn't do that is because they hated the Apostle Paul. They tried to kill him. And you can imagine uh, their attitude toward them. Okay, toward him. God bless you. Come on in. Got a study guide and a map back there for you. It's a good seat. Okay. They uh, tried to take his life many times. Because what he was teaching and preaching, okay, he wasn't uh, necessarily trying to uh, target them, okay? But what he was saying was that Christ came and fulfilled all of those aspects of the law. They don't want to hear that. I remember talking to family members about being saved and being born again. They were in, involved in a different denomination or religion. Okay, one that is kind of based on a lot of tradition and different rituals that you go through. Okay, uh, they were very uh, steeped in that. My mother was raised in it. And I had people get mad at me. Okay, and tell me, you're just trying to bash our religion. I wasn't. I was trying to show them that okay, being saved is not a bunch of traditions and rituals. It's a repentance of sin and an acceptance of Christ as our Lord, faith in him. Okay, anyway, this is what he was facing. Okay, so these people in the book of Hebrews, or the, the Hebrews, uh, hated him. And so he did not name himself uh, as the author of that book, okay? And uh, you know, maybe he did that so that some of them would hear it. Okay, if he would have said it, that was from him, they wouldn't even have listened. Okay, so he states his authority uh, in this book even more than in other books that he wrote, okay? And that's one of the reasons that he wrote it. Let's go to verse 3. We are in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 
Okay, we're going to be reading now in verse 3 through 5. Okay, so we have his salutation. Okay, now verse 3, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, okay, so our consolation also aboundeth okay, by Christ. So God is a God of all comfort. And he comforts us, doesn't he? Thank God for that. Okay? He comforts us, and we can comfort others with the same comfort that we have been comforted with. Okay, you can testify to people. You can encourage people that God will help them. How do you know that? How do you know that God will help them? Because he's helped you. How do you know that God will be merciful to other people? He's been merciful to us. Okay, we pray for people and we talk to people. We try to encourage them. Okay, God has been that way with us. The Bible says he's not a respecter of persons. He loves all people. We know that. So the same God that has comforted and helped us, we know that he's able to comfort and help other people. Okay? And that's, what, that's one of the things that we try to do is to get people to look to God. Okay, so... Uh, this is one of the reasons, okay, for some of the things that we go through. God helps us, okay? We help others. That's what ministering is all about, is helping people, okay? It's one of the reasons why we go through things. Maybe you've gone through things and you're like, no doubt you have, and you've thought, why in the world am I facing this right now? Okay, have you ever thought that, anybody? Yes, yeah, okay. everybody has. Okay, now. Okay, everybody has. Well, sometimes we go through things, okay, so that we can learn something from it to be able to help others down the line. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, some things are self-inflicted. Okay, now. Some things we go through because we bring it upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We're not going to blame God for everything. Okay. We have to learn our lessons and make the changes that God wants us to make in our lives. All of us have to face that. There's no exception. Okay, I have to face that. You're a pastor, so what? It's not make me immune to God's chastening and Him wanting me to change and to grow. Okay, but having said that, you know, there are times that God allows us to go through things, okay, so that we we will be able to help others. Okay, so Let's look at the Apostle Paul. We know that he faced a lot. We've covered some of it before. We will in just a moment. We'll read some scripture about it. Okay? He faced a lot. Okay? We just talked about the church, the Hebrews, how the Jews had tried to kill him. Okay? More than once. Okay? But we don't, we don't see in Paul's life that he was living in some kind of blatant sin. And that's why he was facing that. Okay, now we have another example. Who's another example that we have? Job. Yeah, I know it's right there. I'm just, okay, you don't, have, you don't have to read it verbatim, but maybe, okay, whatever. Okay, Job is another example. Okay? The Bible says that God said that he was upright. That he was perfect and upright. But there were still things that Job needed to learn. Okay, and so he went through some things, and uh, you know the Apostle Paul was doing right. There were things that he had to learn. We know that he was afflicted with a thorn in the flesh. A messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him, and he prayed three times for it, and God didn't deliver him from it. And what did God say? My grace is sufficient for you. Later on, Paul understood 
because the, of the abundance of revelations that God had given to him concerning the gospel, they that God allowed him to face that to keep him humble, to keep him praying. And sometimes we get overconfident. I'm doing pretty good. I don't need to pray. I don't need to read the word of God. I don't need to go to church. And then we fall flat on our face. Okay, when we should have been walking with God humbly. But then what we should do. Anyway, okay, so uh, what we what we go through helps us to be able to have compassion on others and to be able to help them. Okay, we you know we don't we're not up here blowing smoke and looking at things through rose colored glasses. Okay, we all face battles. Yeah. Jesus even told us. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I will become the world. We all face battles. You're going to face battles. Yes. Okay? But the same, okay, okay, you, you face battles as Christians, but let's look at the other side. You also are comforted yes. as a Christian. Yes. Yes, you experience things, but you also experience the comfort of God. Yes. Thank God for the presence of God. Amen. Okay, thank God for God's uh, interceding for us. Okay, so let's look at some examples. We have Ezekiel written down here. Okay, he was by the river among the captives. He sat where they sat. He went through what they went through. He could relate to what they went through. Okay. We especially you can go to what Paul wrote to Timothy and he wrote to Titus. He had told Timothy about a lot of things that he went through and said things like, None of these things move me because I know in whom I have believed. Yeah. He was encouraging the young man. He told him, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Because Timothy was facing things. And Paul was encouraging him. Hey, Timothy, I've been through some stuff too, brother. You know the deal, brother. Okay? Yeah. But I'm persuaded. Okay? These things don't move me. Don't let them move you. Amen. We know who we believe. And Timothy, I remember the faith of your grandmother and your mother. Remember when we prayed for you? We laid hands on you? And God gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit? Well, stir up that gift. Okay? So Paul could encourage him. But we have our greatest example is Jesus. Okay? Jesus can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. And he intercedes for us. Hey, we, we're the ones that think, well, you know, God doesn't understand. God understands more than we understand. Okay, let's look at Hebrews chapter 2, beginning of verse 17. We have it written down there for you. Wherefore, in all things it, is be, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Talking about Jesus. He was made like us. That he might be merciful and faithful high priest and things that pertain to God to make. Well, this is talking about the earthly high priest, but it's going to go on and talk about Jesus, okay? That he might be merciful to the faithful high priest and things pertaining to God, for that he himself suffers being tempted is able to secure, secure them or help them that are tempted. And God chose men. God allowed Jesus to be made a man. Go to Hebrews chapter 4, Okay? And he tells us that we have a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Amen. That was to, that was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin. Because of that, or therefore, let us come what? Oh. Boldly unto the throne of grace. Okay, this is why God calls men to preach. You know, angels are messengers also. 
But who did God send to preach? Who did he call to preach? People. Because we can relate. Okay? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained of men in the things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for he himself also is compassed with infirmity. 1 Corinthians 1 and 26, For you see in your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. God has chosen the weaker things to confound the wise. Okay? So, let's go to verse 6 now. And again, Jesus is the supreme example. We have an example of men. God chose people to minister to people because they can relate. And Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Okay, so let's go down to verse uh, 7. Okay? 6 and 7, excuse me. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye, so shall ye also be of the consolation. Okay, so we are partakers of Christ's sufferings. We will also be partakers of the comfort of the Holy Ghost. John 14 and 6, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. We know that is the Holy Spirit. Okay? Romans 8 and 26, likewise the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay, the Comforter intercedes. Okay, and you and I intercede. We should intercede for one another. Jesus intercedes. The Comforter intercedes. The church should intercede. We should be praying for one another. Okay, a real simple thing to do when you think about somebody, pray for them. Okay, lift them up in prayer. Intercede. We all need help. Okay, every one of us, brothers and sisters, we all need help. And thank God for the Holy Ghost baptism. Just told somebody recently. Okay, they're kind of down. Okay, the enemy is doing what he does. He's lying to them. He's a liar and the father of it. That's what he does. Yes. Okay. Nobody likes you. Everybody hates you. Go eat some more. And I encourage them. I said, you need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Okay? You build up our most holy faith praying yes. in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay? The Spirit of God intercedes for us. Okay, let's go to verse 8 now. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. Okay, now look on your map. I'm not talking about China and Korea and Japan. See over there? To the right of Achaia, you go across the Aegean Sea. See, it says Asia over there. It's the area that it's talking about. Okay, you see the Galatian area over there. So the Galatian church was located. Okay. So he's telling them about all of these things that came upon him, which came upon us, came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even to life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver and who we trust that he will yet deliver us. He also helping together by prayer. There's that statement I just made. We need to pray for one another for us that the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons. Thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Okay. So the comforter helped 
all to endure the troubles that came upon him. And we have written down there for you. We're not going to turn to it. It's several chapters, but if you read chapter 13, verse 44 through 20, verse 3, you'll read a lot of the stuff that he went through. And we can go beyond that. Okay? So this man faced a lot, brother and sister, but and God used it. Okay, just one example, 2 Corinthians 11, 25, later on in this book. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stolen. You're not talking about getting high. <laughs> and they literally tried to kill or did kill him by throwing stones at him. And God raised him up from the dead. And we think we got problems. Yeah. Oh, the devil's telling me I'm no good. Well, he's a liar. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Tell him the truth. He's no good. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. What does it say? When he reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. <coughs> we know his end. We've read the end of the book. Yes, sir. He's a loser. He's already lost. And I don't have to listen to his lies. Amen. I can resist him steadfast in the faith. That's scripture. I can resist him and submit myself to God, and he has to flee. That's scripture. Yes, he does. Yes, sir. He is a liar <coughs> and the father of it. That's a direct quote from Jesus. Okay? So don't listen to him. Okay, so God helped Paul. And he'll help us. Okay? I I was, I, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep. He spent a day and a night in the ocean. Yikes. Okay? Let's go to verse 12 now. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you word. Okay, so the character of Paul's ministry is a testimony of a good conscience. He had a, he had a clear conscience. I've done right by God and by people. Yes. They sincerely, simply, I'm trying to preach the gospel to people. I'm trying to help them get saved. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not out here trying to make a name for myself. Remember what he told them earlier? Who was Paul? Who was Apollos? They're just ministers that you heard the gospel by. One man plants, another man waters. God gives the increase. He always gave the glory to the Lord. Amen. That's what he tried to do. Okay, so uh, there were those that found fault with him, but he knew that he behaved himself godly toward them. That he had done right by them. Okay? Let's go to verse 13. For we write none other things unto you than what you read or acknowledge, and I trust you shall acknowledge even to the end. As also you have acknowledged us in, in part, that we are your rejoicing, even as ye are also, excuse me, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. So the purpose of this epistle, they, they, he wanted them to acknowledge that what he was writing to them is correct and to acknowledge his ministry toward them. What he taught them was right. Okay? And to realize, brother and sister, that if they would just simply stay in the truth, it would keep them. Yeah. You know, the, the God can keep you. Yes. We don't have to vacillate. We don't have to go off into some uh, something that's not correct. We can stay right. We can stay in the word of God. Amen. Okay, we can stay in the truth. And we can rejoice together at the end. Amen. Okay? You know, there are people that are in heaven already that I'm going to thank when I get there. Yes. Because they told me the truth. I'm going to thank Pastor St. Clair mm -hmm. for telling me the truth. I'm going to thank 
Pastor Davis for telling me the truth. Yes. Because what they taught me has kept me. And we'll be able to rejoice together. They're going to be glad that they told me the truth because I made it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad they told me the truth because I made it. Yeah, I'm right. And we'll Amen. just be glad it happened again. Amen. Okay? Let's go on now. I don't think we're going to finish this tonight, but okay. Verse 15 and 16. I think we're going to stop right here. Okay? And in this confidence, okay, I was minded to come unto you before that you might have a second benefit. To pass by you into Macedonia, and to come again out of Macedonia unto you, and of you be brought on my way toward Judea. Okay, so uh, he speaks. Remember we saw at the end of 1 Corinthians that he wanted to come to them. So he speaks of this proposed visit again. So he's got he's got confidence in them. Okay, you know, uh, he's kind of laying some groundwork here because if you remember, he was pretty sharp in some of the things that he said in 1 Corinthians about the things that they were doing that were wrong. But he had confidence in them because they had made things right. He wanted to come and see them. Okay, thank God for that. Okay, he, he had a desire to uh, continue to be a blessing to them. Yeah. And that's why we have, you know, we have people in organization, it's, uh, we have people that are in positions of leadership of us, people like, you could say they're like Timothy, people like the Apostle Paul. They come around and we let you know, hey, they're going to be able to blend down. It's, you know, there's times people have come here. Pastor Olson, I think, was the last one that we saw here. They come to be a blessing to us. Yes. To help us because they want us to make it. Yes. Okay? And you know, it's a blessing to them. It really is. It's a mutual blessing mm -hmm. when they come and they see you still serving God. Yes. All right. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. We're out of time. Uh, tonight we do have fellowship in the back. Amen. Okay, so let's go ahead and dismiss the Bible study. And let's look to the Lord. Brother Collins, will you dismiss us tonight, please? Father God, we thank you for this time of Bible study. We thank you for your word and for the comfort that that we have in you, God, and in your word. Give us the, the words to speak to tell others about the about the comfort that you can provide them. Lord. Bless each one now as, as we leave here tonight. Bless our fellowship and 